On September 11, 2009, the Watauga Riverkeeper received a report on our pollution hotline stating that a trout farm located at the foot of Grandfather Mountain was withdrawing water from the headwaters section of the river. We investigated the report and found a large intake pipe located in the mid-channel. The pipe was removing most of the flow and dewatering a long section of the river downstream. This portion of the Watauga River is classified as high quality waters with a supplemental trout classification, meaning that it's a trout fishery. This type of water diversion is very bad for trout, especially juveniles like this one, as well as other aquatic life like the very rare hellbender salamander that live in this section of the river. A report of the water diversion was made to the Army Corps of Engineers, the Division of Water Quality, and the North Carolina Wildlife Resources. Approximately 30 days later, we returned to the Watauga River to see if any corrective action had been required by the regulatory agencies and to collect evidence in preparation for future action. Here's what we found. So here are two simulated trout fingerlings, and we're going to show you why this kind of intake design is so bad for fish. It creates a condition called entrainment and impingement, and we're going to illustrate what that looks like from the fish's perspective. So say I'm a juvenile trout swimming in the water here, and I come across this intake grate. What happens is the force of the water pins me against the grate just like these leaves. You can see that the force of the water has impinged the leaves against the grape. Well, the same thing will happen to a small fish as they're swimming along. So, here's our fish come to investigate and boom, they get sucked down and pinned against the grape and they can't move because the force of the water is pinning them. Now that's the best thing that can happen to them. The worst thing actually is if they happen to go lengthways into the hole then they're sucked down into the pipe. Boom! And they're gone forever. And they've gone into whatever pumping or transport mechanism exists inside the pipe. And if there's a pump inside this pipe, then they'll get ground up. Let's say it's a straight pipe into the pond, then these small little trout will make their way into the trout pond with 12, 13, 14 inch mature trout. And they're going to be lunch. So either way, this structure is going to damage small, young trout and other fishes that get stuck on this grate or suck down it. Very, very bad design. One of the worst designs you could have. So we're here below the water intake in this dam that's been created by the Grandfather Mountain Trout Farm. And what we're going to try and simulate is if a young juvenile trout was downstream, could he make it beyond this dam upstream to say get away from a predator or to make it to an upstream reach um, to, for a different habitat and to feed? So here we have our simulated fish. So let's pretend he's in the water here and he comes to this structure he would have to leap out of the water and there's nowhere for him to land that's a pool of water anywhere in this vicinity. It's just more rock. And so this vertical three foot dam is in reality a fish passage barrier for the native fish to pass up and down the channel of the Watauga River. It's very problematic when people construct these barriers, man-made constructions that prevent fish passage. Is that great? It's basically in the mid-channel of the river. It's one of the worst designs imaginable. 
what's an alternative or what would be better for the river? Well, one possible solution is to make a J-hook coming from the bank of the river and situate an intake over to the far side of the river so that only partial amount of the flow can be withdrawn to sustain the trout pond fishery while a rest of the flow of the river is allowed to flow naturally down the river bank. As this design exists right now, it is basically taking almost all the flow of the river. There's not much way you can work with this design to prevent a huge volume of flow from being taken out of the river or being impacted by this huge dam. There's no natural flow at this water level, and today the Watauga River is about twice its median flow. This is a high level of flow in October. But there's no natural passage or flow of water that would allow a fish to get upstream. And so this design is a huge problem, and there are ways to fix it. We just need folks to step up and be a part of the solution. Unfortunately, since very little action has been taken, we now have to begin a process of documenting the failure of our government to protect a public fishery. And what we're about to do is measure the length of the river with this standard 100 foot tape. It's been dewatered by the water intake for the, the trout farm right here. The dewatered section of the river measured 575 feet. We then measured the diameter of the intake. Four feet, 11 inches. And then we measured the height of the dam, which was taller than the yardstick. After that, we took the 575 foot trip downriver to locate and measure the pipe that discharges the diverted water back into the river. The North Carolina water quality standards mandate that, and I quote, the temperature for trout waters shall not be increased by more than 0.5 degrees Celsius due to the discharge of heated water, end quote. And the diameter of the pipe is 2 feet 4 inches. In September, Dr. Shea Tuperty from Appalachian State University measured the temperature differential at the 4 foot 11 inch withdrawal pipe and the 28 inch discharge pipe. He found that the water was, indeed, one degree Celsius hotter at the discharge, meaning that the trout farm was violating North Carolina water quality standards for temperature of a trout water on that day. It is important for the regulatory agencies to recognize that we have several types of nature and tourism dependent businesses in Watauga County that depend on clean and abundant water. Let's meet just two of these downstream business owners. Uh, here at the Appalachian Angle, we offer, gu offer a guide service as well as a, as a fly shop for fishermen to come in and buy their, buy their supplies. And then we do guide fishing trips down here on the, the Watauga River. How dependent is your business, the service you provide, on healthy, clean water? It's, it's everything. <laughs> if you don't have healthy, clean water, we don't have trips. You know, if there's not fish to be caught. You know, I mean, obviously we don't have a, we don't have a business. Uh, you got to have you got to have good, clean, healthy, you know, fish <clears throat> fish environment. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to be able to get in there and effectively catch those fish. Uh, well, I own Fosco Fishing Company and Outfitters, and we're a guide service. Um, we take people fly fishing on the rivers in the local area, and we also have a fly shop. We sell gear, flies, uh, anything they might need. So you're an important part of the local economy that depends on the natural resources here. Absolutely, yeah. We've got a lot of people that live on these rivers, a lot of businesses on these rivers, and we all need to take this, this important part of our, really our economy, the environment, everything, into account um, and, and respect the rivers. With this little educational video, we just wanted to let you know what was happening to one of North Carolina's very best trout rivers and invite you to join us in encouraging Steve Tedder at the North Carolina Division of Water Quality to step up and demonstrate some leadership. Find a solution to this problem that restores the Watauga River. You can reach Steve at 336-771-4950.